for the opportunity to again serve as Vice Chair of this year's MEP Management Plan of the Year Judging Committee. This is my third time to serve as Vice Chair of the Committee. And on behalf of the MMY Judging Committee, I'm here to present to the MEP membership our committee's choice for the MEP Management Plan of the Year 2019, who was approved by the MEP Board of Governors at their meeting this morning. As most of you know, MEP has been at the forefront of promoting management excellence for nation building. MEP has presented the MEP Management Man of the Year Award for over five decades. And this is to recognize outstanding achievements of any individual in the private sector or in government, whether MEP member or not, who has exceptionally distinguished himself or herself in the practice of management. Just to remind everyone, the criteria for the award include the following. Number one, integrity, prestige, and distinction in the business community. Number two, high qualities as a manager exemplified in his or her leadership, vision, decisiveness, fairness, and firmness in dealing with people. Number three, exceptional ability for performing his or her managerial functions under exceptional conditions such as creating and managing a new enterprise, reorganizing and reorienting an existing enterprise, turning around a moribund company considering the difficulties of the times. Number four, active and continuous management at top level of a private business or industrial enterprise or a government institution for a significant length of time and in a manner highly deserving of the recognition and commendation of the MEP by reason of his or her contribution to the advancement of management as a career in the Philippines. Number five, contribution to reshaping national values and orientation. Number six, effective service and tangible contribution to nationwide professional, social, civic, or charitable undertakings through personal initiative. Number seven, the organization under his or her stewardship must have exhibited consistent exemplary performance and achieve stability under the highest standards of business ethics and practice. And lastly, the organization must be an entity operating in the Philippines and the business must have contributed substantially to the growth and development of the Philippine economy. At the outset, please allow me to acknowledge the presence of the past awardees who are here today with us and may I request them to please rise to the acknowledgement. I think most of them are in this table. So we have uh, Former Prime Minister Cesar Pirata. We have uh, Tony Aquino. And Ambassador Joey Pisha. Are there other MMY? Oh, yeah, sorry. The main head people. Our former BSP governor, Saito Tampo. Okay, now, now that the search process has been completed, please allow me to publicly, publicly thank the other members of the MMY Judging Committee, who are past awardees and former past presidents, as stipulated in the MAP virus. May I ask them to stand up, please, if they are in the room? For background, they are. Master Joey Pisha, Suji Tanbukin, yours truly, Gigi Nomilona, Cesar Berata, Cora de la Paz Bernardo, and Juan Paterno. So I think we have, uh, we have a majority here, how about the Senate? The five committee members have served in the MMY Judging Committee for four to seven years. It's the second time for two committee members to be in the MMY Judging Committee. Uh, thanks are also in order to the following members of the MMY Search Committee. The chair being our MEP immediate past president, Juan Fernandez. Juan, thank you. <laughs> our vice chair is uh, MEP 2017 president, Marie Zamora. <laughs> and members of the following, Popo de la Salle, president 2015. <laughs> and Francisco, president 2012. Jude Alapox, President of 2011. And Perry Pear, President of 2016. As most of you know, the search for MEP management of the year involves a very tedious process. 
Nominations are generated from the membership with the help of the MMY Search Committee. To ensure a wide search of potential awardees, the MEP Board of Governors has institutionalized an MMY Search Committee, headed by MAP's immediate past president, to identify and propose nominees for the award. The nominees then go through a rigid screening by the MMY General Committee, which, as provided for in our bylaws, is composed of selected past presidents and past awardees. With the exception of the chair and the vice chair, the names of the members of the MMY Judging Committee are not announced until such time that the judging process has been completed. The Judging Committee, of which I am vice chair, served as the board of judges that chose the most deserving candidate for this year. We received seven nominations from the MMY Search Committee. One candidate emerged as possible winner after the first secret ballot where the seven committee members were asked to rank their top three candidates from among the seven. That same candidate emerged as the clear winner after the second secret ballot. After a discussion on the accomplishments of the clear winner, our committee made a unanimous decision to endorse that particular candidate for the award. All the seven committee members were present in our October 8th judging. The MMY Judging Committee's choice was then presented to the MAP Board of Governors for approval at its board meeting this morning, and then we are presenting it to the membership today, which we are doing now in today's uh, MAP General Membership Meeting. Our awarding this year, if approved by the General Membership, will be the 43rd recipient of the award. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to present to you the choice of the MMY Judging Committee, who has been approved by the MAP Board of Governors. The MAP Management Man of the Year 2019 awardee is
is known that the final date will depend on the availability of the award meeting. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Thank you, Ed. and I just want to applaud Ed as well, who was a management man of the year. Um, again, congratulations to all our management um, man of the year for 2019, Mr. Tan. Um, at this point, I call on Chair of the MEP Nomination and Election Committee, Mr. Fred Parumao, for the announcement of the elected MEP governors for 2020 and 2021. Here they are in alphabetical order. 
verification is in alphabetical order and not on the number of votes cast. There are four governors who are elected. The first one is attorney Emmanuel Noel Bonohan. Second is attorney Danilo Danicon Concepcion, <laughs> president of the University of Philippines. <laughs> the third is Miss Maria Victoria Marevic Espano. <laughs> Number four is Mr. Aurelio Gigi Arnold Timona III, Chair of the NCU. So those are the four elected governors. Congratulations to our new governors. Thank you and pleasant afternoon. Uh, thank you, Fred, and congratulations again to Noel, Danny, um, uh, Gigi, and uh, Felipe. At this point, um, we will now proceed to the presentation of new MAP members for induction. So I would like to call on the chair of MAP Membership Committee and President and CEO of My Needed Water Services. Mr. Juan Fernandez. Paginhaw ang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Good afternoon. Nanotice nyo ba yung board natin will be representing ang FEU at IUP daw. Wala daw ang tinayo at saka lasan. Pero nandito naman yan sa pag-over ng sa'yo. Anyway, good afternoon fellow MAP members, ladies and gentlemen. Mayor Isma Moreno and the membership. Is I am pleased to announce this afternoon, we are inducting 15 new MAP members who will increase our total membership to 1,029. May I ask our inductees to come up the stage as his or her name is called. May you also call on the sponsors to stand behind their nominees, please. First, Mr. Arsenio Toto Barcelona, President of Harvest Agribusiness Corporation, Line of Business Agribusiness, sponsors Professor Rolly D. and Oscar Toval. Second, Attorney Cosette Canilao, CEO of Aboides Intercapital, former head of the PPP Center, line of business investment of or infrastructure, sponsors Romy Bernardo and yours truly. Third, sorry, I was corrected by Cosette. She is not a lawyer. Marami na raw. Another trivia. Tatlo na po yung nasa board natin na uh, lawyers. Siya, apat. Attorney Lim, Attorney Dani, Attorney Bonoan, eh. Oy, Attorney D. Apat. So, magulo po yung board natin. Ay, eh. Biro lang. Masyadong marami magsasalita. Third. Mr. Benedict Carandang, Vice President, External Relations of First Circle, Line of Business, Fintech Services.
sponsors, Carlos Dominguez and yours truly. Fourth, and I think the youngest of our inductees, Ms. Georgiana George Carlos, co-founder and CEO of Fetch Naturals, line of business, manufacture and distribution of pet care products, sponsors Alma Jimenez and yours truly. George was a speaker in our last MAPCEO conference. The fifth is Ms. Lei Cecilia de Armas, CEO President of Brand Speak Asia, line of business, PR, digital marketing, design and development. Sponsors, yours truly and President Risa. Umababa ang average age natin. Sixth, Mr. Philip Gioca, Country Manager of Job Street Philippines, Line of Business Online Recruitment Services. Sponsors, President Risa and yours truly. Seventh, Ms. Jolina Khan, CEO of Kandu Solutions, Line of Business Training and HR Services. Sponsors, Karen Batumbakal and Maripe Zamora. Eighth, Mr. Richmond Lee, Founder and Director of Atlas Office Incorporated, President of Atlas Property Shared Services Incorporated, Line of Business Real Estate. Sponsors, Ms. President Risa and yours truly. Ninth, Mr. Edwin Matuli, SVP and Board of Director of Synchrony Global Services Philippines Incorporated, Line of Business, Multi-Sourcing, Multi-Site Implementation, Operation and Support Services. Sponsors, Marife Zamora and Maria Cristina Concepcion. Ten, Mr. Carlos Ocampo, Founding partner of the law firm Ocampo Manalo Valdez Lee. Line of business, legal services, sponsors Grace Chonko and Anna Germain Bombasi. <laughs> Eleven, Mr. Gilbert Santa Maria, President and CEO of Philippine Airlines. Line of business, aid transportation and logistics. Sponsors, Amando de Tanco Jr. and yours truly. Twelve, Mr. Romel Sitin, President and CEO of United Auctioneers Incorporated, Line of Business in this Industrial Auction Services. Sponsors, Maripe Zamora and Elia. Thirteen, Marco Sergio Vazolaire, General Manager of Edsa Shangri-La Plaza, Line of Business, Hotel and Tourism, Sponsors, President Risa and yours truly. Fourteen, Mr. Sanji Bohra, Balik Bayan. President and CEO of Security Bank Corporation, Line of Business Banking, Sponsors, President Lisa, and yours truly. And last but not the least, Mr. Benjamin Ben Yao, the entrepreneur of the Philippines 2019, and Chair and CEO of, and President of Steel Asia Manufacturing Corporation, Line of Business Reinforced Steel Bar Manufacturing. Sponsors, Mr. Adrian Cristobal and George Trulli. At this point, I'd like to call on our MAP President to lead the induction of our new members. May I ask everybody to stand at solemnity for the occasion. Please 
raise your right hand and repeat after me. Hi. Say your name. Do your life solemn and rich. I will perform well and faithfully to the best of my ability. My duties as a regular member in order to contribute to the achievement of the objectives of the Management Association of the Philippines. So help me God. Congratulations and welcome to the end. Congratulations. Let us welcome and give another warm round of applause to all our new members. Okay, so on to the exciting part of our program. Bring the 
monthly buyers because, you know, he was still there with all his fans. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Mayor of the City of Manila, Mayor Francisco Isco Moreno Lomagoso. First time, uh, medyo mas kabado ko. I'm trying to relax myself because I'm going to use a tool that you always use. No? First time kong gagawitin ito. But uh, hopefully, uh, at 
least uh, in a few minutes, uh, you'll see what is Manila a few months before and what is Manila for the past two decades. Uh, and alam mo itong kinabibilangin, ito kinatatayuan natin, city ulang ng Rizal ito. And I think Prime Minister Birata will agree with me that uh, ito ay isa lang sa parangay ng Rizal. Ito kinatatayuan natin. Everybody is Rizal. Everywhere is Rizal. San Juan Rizal. Quezon City Rizal. Makati Rizal. Tagig Rizal. Lahat yan Rizal. Kaya sabi nila nung dekada si Center Raw, nung panahon ni Ed. Ano daw? There are three most powerful person in this country. The President of the country, the Governor of Rizal, and the Mayor of Manila. At the time. Pero wala na ako kami. At least now, we can honestly say, and we are proud to say today, that we are number one. Talagang walang maniniwala ng number one kami. Wala pa kayo. You know, Ms. Mantari would agree with me that we are number one. Because he always talks about numbers. Number one, pagkambilangan sa ilalim. One, two, three, four. That out of 16, we are number 16 city in Metro Manila. This is Manila. Maraming salamat sa pagkakataon na binigay sa akin ng mga taga Manila. Bago po ako umupo, ito po ang Manila. Hindi po ito ginugal lang. There is no pretension. So, with the help of technology, with regard to Photoshop, no? we don't. In fact, nowadays, we don't lie anymore. We don't deny anymore of our challenges. Because I always tell my, my group, you know, in problem solving, you have to accept that there is a problem. And then, because if you keep on denying it, there's no need to solve. To solve. That's why this is a few months ago. And it's been ongoing uh, for the past decades. As you can see, there is a song in 2010 election. And it's not even a metaphor. Nakaligo ka na ba sa dagat ng basura? Ayan po. As you can see, this is one of our rivers. And I think our foreign guests will agree with us, or at least to me, that the most expensive property in this world, sa mga ulad na nabayo, ay ang property na nasa tabi ng tubig. That's why our fellow men, fellow citizens, would love to stay sa tabi ng tubig. Because it's a prime property. Then, social issues. We are the North Star of Democracy. So if you want a rally, you go to Manila. Because the seat of power is there, so we have to deal with this. And while we respect freedom of expression, but, you know, it generates certain problems with us. That's why uh, nowadays we try to appropriate uh, areas for expression of oneself's uh, beliefs. Pero, more than that, ito po talaga yung mga ninyari. Ang pataya sa Manila, taliwag pa na. And, hindi ay yung walang kaginilayo mo. Naging karmay na lang ang buhay ng tao sa Manila. There was a time that 
is known by, I guess, in your mind, we go to Manila. Takot at okay. Because uh, a sense of responsibility, to respect to human rights. So, kita po ninyo, you can see, I hope you can come and visit uh, on a Friday in our day. As you can see, that's how we are. That's the apple. And look at our heritage side, being destroyed. Ako magagaling si Palamok si Do. Architect. And this is a perennial view or uh, persistent. Consistent, at least, or very consistent. And I used to live like this. It's a, it's a fact. There you go. Lumabas na ang katotokan na hindi pwede i-cumpli. Sabi ko na nga ba, matter of time, you know, data will be shown to public. And ito ang sitwasyon ng Manila. In fact, recently, uh, I think we were the number three in the world. Uh, so, medyo hindi maayos tirhan na nasyudad. Hindi uh, lang namin nakuha yung data. And I'm not pretty sure about those people who studied it. But there are some, uh, ito na po ang mitsura ng Manila na talagang uh, uh, pinasok po uh, uh, at particular itong portion na ito. Uh, paano ba ito? Particular yung portion na ito. Kasi all these problems boils down to this. Ito. Kayo rin naman. Pag wala kayong pera, nangungutang kayo, di ba? Para lumago. Kaya kailangan lagi kayo may pera. You know, to invest, to reinvest, to sustain, to maintain, for grow. So, ito rin ang buhay ng isang LG. Then, look. Everybody appropriate roads to themselves. You are in a wrong business. You should run for mayor. Because all you have to do is sit there and watch everything. You have a piece of property of the city about 43 square kilometer. You can, you can appropriate to any John Doe's and marry. And you can collect 500 pesos in a two by two daily. So that's why you are in a wrong business because you are talking of billions and billions of pesos. No? With receipt, hard work, uh, so many meetings in the evening, directional meetings, and so on and so forth. All you have to do is to run for mayor, and every day you'll get 5 million pesos, about 150 million pesos, and about 1.8 billion a year, and about 5.4 billion tax free. <laughs> Without lifting a finger. As you can see, that's right, though. That's recto abinyo. O sige, mas madali na lang. Panahon ni uh, Ambassador uh, Pusi yung Ascaraga. <laughs> Ascaraga. Now, known, better known as Divisoria. No? That's Divisoria. And hey, look at that. Not, sabi nila, traffic. Hindi traffic sa EDSA, traffic. Traffic sa EDSA ng vehikulo. Sa amin, traffic ng tao. Yan ang itsura ng Divisoria. Ah. At dito, meron kaming farmland. Opo, sa Divisoria, matatabaho ang bunga ng prutas dito. O, oh, nasa tenga ng tao eh. Dito po pinipitas yung mga ikaw ninyo. That's why our crime rate will never go down. And I'll tell you one problem with this type of picture. A very simple picture. Meron is not here. Tumakbo, makikita mo. Kahalubino ng tao. 
And for all you know, ang ganda pa ng salt, isa sa iyo. Yeah, that's why. Uh, yung talagang ang crime rate namin was, wow, flying colors. Mr. Prime Minister. <laughs> so, as you can see, tingnan nyo, this is not ours. These are disinterested personalities and agencies and international you know, monitoring uh, group. Yan kami. Kasi sabi ko nga, at the end of the day, you can lie with your words, but you cannot lie with data. Doon ka magkakamali pagka nag-publica doon. Yan kami. We all fail. At least we're very successful in failing. <laughs> Why? What happened? Because maybe uh, passive leadership, day to day, long to day. I manage 1,000. Uh, 7,100 uh, 7, islands. What is Manila? It's just one city. Because of maybe arrogance, maybe uh, physically challenged, handling 1.8 nighttime population and 3.2 million, 3 million daytime population. So maybe, maybe, and all maybes. Stagnation, day to day. Just go to the office, sign. I've been signing documents. That's the easiest part of this job. But uh, a room on a regular uh, month, no? about one full table in a room, times 10 tables. That's what I do. That's what I do. Every so, what you're not seeing on live Facebook is what we're doing as a normal uh, mayor or local chief executive. So, naging ganyan ang Manila. Ang daming umalis. Oh, ang daming iniwan ng Manila. Why? Because the gig is offering something. It, actually, it all started in Ortigas. Just so you know. Because Makati was designed in, in a long term, literally. But Ortigas, for that matter, after building Makati, the Ayalas, started offering spaces, good, uh, uh, conducive places. Then Mandaluyo, Mandaluyo on the riverside, offered the same. Then Quezon City started developing. Then uh, Taguig, uh, because of a concept of uh, an open space being you know, uh, converted into another uh, business-like communities. Then Manila, uh, ay nawa naman ang Diyos, andun pa rin kami. <laughs> Hindi naman kami nawala. But the most famous, uh, pinakasikat na tarjeta ng araw, that any businessman here would want in his pocket is that yung kanyang calling card ang nakalagay na address is Colta. Nako, i-display niya. Oh, you want my card? Oh. And my office is in Colta. Wow. Eh nga, wala nga magbigay ng calling card sa target o targeta sa Colta. But there's no business there. Kawawang Cybels. I don't know if you shop in Cybels. That's the response of your time. <laughs> 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 but the entire stretch of about uh, 700 meters. No? Uh, that's why yan na nangyari. Stagnation, hibernation, passive leadership. The name today na lang ang may nila. So, anyway, then, gwa po yun, no? <laughs> Puyat lang. And 
how do we address it? I think, bago maging healthy ang Manila, we have to heal it. In healing, you're going back to basic. And that's why what we're trying to do nowadays in Manila is elementary of governance. Simply lang. Una muna, I don't have all the uh, solutions in our problems, but I have some specialty in, in running you know, or making simple policy. Eh, papaluhog ko lang yung kalye. Pwede maging hawa ka makapagmamaneo. Malinis ko yung tapat ng negosyo mo. Pwede magiging kaigay-gaya yung tindahan mo. O, tapat kami sa gobyerno. Pwede may certainty na sa Manila. Mga maayos, panatag ka, na anak mo, papasok sa eskwela, walang gagampala. Hindi na maagawan ng cellphone. So, we thought on day one. This is what I got. And agencies of government, came up with a formal, official letter. We got nothing. I, a, a, a few days after that, there is a, a statement coming from an agency of government who do the audit that we are missing about 4.3 billion pesos. Unexplained something. Then, when I assumed, I saw that Immediately after losing the election, they spent 2.9 billion pesos in 30 days. In a hurry, huh? I don't know why. But, okay, magkalala. Hindi ko sasayangin yung pera nyo na umawala. Darating din takdang oras. Because there will be what we call in government post-audit. I don't want to wait, we'll keep on waiting and, you know. Then, uh, okay, maraming salamat. Okay, ito ang inuna ko. I immediately on day one called command conference to change the tone of addressing criminalities and how to take care of human rights and how to address uh, how criminals think. Why? I used to live with them. They're my buddies. <laughs> yes. I told them. Alam ko, mas magaling kayo sa akin. Magaling kayong manghuli. Pero hindi nyo basa. Mag-isip. Ang taong nagubuto. Ang taong may bisyo. Ang taong batugan. Then I explained it to them. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. So, awan ng Diyos. July 1 na yan. Dere, derecho na po yan. Hindi na po namin yan. Simple lang. Can you imagine yung lugar na yan? This hallway, this part, all of this. Nobody can walk underpass. Nobody. As in, when you walk, it's like the same thing that you saw in the Visoria. And ironically, ironically, when you go down the office of the mayor, when you go down to the office, yan ang labis nila. Ang galing mo. Pamilyar ka talaga sa mga nila. Yeah. Tapos, when I said in CNN interview, and I made a commitment, papaliguan ko ang may nila. That is not a metaphor. As you can see, literal. So, tuloy-tuloy yan. This is Divisoria. May EDSA pala sa Maynila. Can you imagine how many links were appropriated to Enterprising individual. Tignan nyo. 
That's why those people don't want to pay taxes. These people, they don't want to pay taxes. This, this building, oh my God. They don't like, most of them, most, most of them, not all, most of them. No, I swear, we have the, look at that. Oh, tignan ninyo yung building. Ngayon, sa kanan. Tignan ninyo. Dahil nagsaayos kami, you know what happened? They destroyed their building, they're now going to put new buildings. Yes, you, at the corner of Soler, hindi lang namin naisama, no? At the corner of Soler and Recto, that building alone. I'll show you. I hope tamaan yung uh, That building destroyed and started investing. Kasi meron palang kali sa tapat ng bahay niya. <laughs> So, magtaka kayo. Ito siya dati. Question. Have you ever seen in the news may nagpaluan? May nagtulakan? May nagsigawa? Why all of a sudden they were all gone in 14 hours of our two decades problem? You want to know the secret? Wala po kong ginawa. That is the secret. Wala po ginawa. Wala po tinanggap, nawala sila. Ganun lang kasi. Because when you start collecting for heading and party, and I hope at this time you know what's the meaning of heading, edi siya, Eh, sino si Pati? Pati mga kasama niya. When you start collecting, there will be certain level of ownership because that's how we think. Kumuha ka na, istorbuhin mo pa ako, e eh, akin to. A privilege, through tolerance, became a right because of a few hundred pesos every day. Nung walang tumanggap, lahat kinabahan. So that's why, nung kinausap ko sila, nagpakababagdog tayo. Time to go. Panahon na po, ay balik natin sa taong bayan, ang kalsada. Ang kalsada ay para sa lahat, hindi para kung kani-kanino lang. Awan ng Diyos, natanggal sila na. Konti lang mo yan, yung kaninang view na, 15,000 yung po sila. <laughs> You do your mind. Then, nangyari ang sona a few weeks after, which is good for us. The president came up with an order to the entire country, to the 1,600 municipalities and city, to start clearing up the roads of the respective local government through the ILG secretary. That in 60 days, we have to clean up. Awa ng Diyos, natapos na po ang 60 days, maraming mga city nag-claim in Metro Manila that they are 100% compliant. I'm happy for that. Because if I'm going to be a mayor of Makati, the only problem that I'm going to face is Santo Nino, Pembo, Rembo, Sembo, Olympia. I don't know if there's obstruction in Mayala Avenue. Or maybe in Forbes Park, Tasma. I don't think so. So that's why Manila is very unique. That's why we were created medium compliant. And what is the aside? After the 60 days, you know how many clearing operations that we conducted? Pag sama sama na yung clearing operations sa Makati, Tagi, Quezon City, uh, uh, Mandaluyong, Pasig, mga 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 m
പക്ഷെ പക്ഷെ മഹിമാണ് പക്ഷെ പക്ഷെ മഹിമാണ് hindi pa namin nagalusan ng Maylina. Because we are a medium compliant. So, ibig sabihin, what? <laughs> After, you know, this engineer Andres, no? uh, yan ang, uh, yan ang uh, mabisang tagapaglinis ng kalsada. And I would like to recognize our Vice Mayor, Hany Laguna. Mga <laughs> partners niya. So we conducted 3,700 plus clearing operations. Now, what happened to day 61? <laughs> They stopped, we continued. Because we did not do it because we were asked to do it. Because it is our obligation as a city government to keep the peace and order situation on every territorial jurisdiction of ours. We will never stop. I would rather cry and pay, but I will never stop. So, then, ayan na We start doing executive order number one. Transparency. And open governance. So, we learn. social amelioration program. Ayan na po. Maraming salamat kay Vice Mayor Hany Laguna, mga kusihan. Bakit? Because this is, how going, this is how I'm going to solve criminalities in Manila. Through social amelioration. Because a lot of people try. Oh, uh, yeah, that is no bit. <laughs> I think the root cause of criminality is economic. I'm not an economist. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to try differently. Ipalang ang magiging approach ko. To address the way I think it, the way I used to live. Kung paano ang pangangailangan ng isang squatter? Paano ang pangangailangan ng isang estudyante walang bako? Paano ang pangangailangan ng isang estudyante na walang uniforme? Anong hirap na kanyang nanay? Anong hirap na kanyang tatay? Yung tatay niya napipilit ang gumawa ng kriminalidad. Dala ng katamaran may hindi o may hindi. Wala na siya na wala ng pag-asa. Ang pinakamadali, kumayang pumunta sa highway, abangan yung mga truck ninyo. Habang dumadaan sa highway. Maging adventurous. Yes. That's why maraming salamat sa kanila. Now, oh, senior senior citizen, I hope you don't mind. Okay, you are all welcome to Manila. I have job opportunity for you. But no one will even trabaho. Because in Manila nowadays, if they can do it in Japan, if they can do it in America, if they can do it in Hong Kong, why can we not do it in this country? So that's why I started. Marami salamat kay Mr. Pantacco. Marami salamat kay Mr. Rendriang. Marami salamat sa kanilang lahat. Because they start listening to our appeal. To bring back the capacity of a person to earn. Bring back them to society. Make them, uh, uh, in a way, economically useful. Because they can. Because they are capable. Because of age limitation, they were deprived and ask to stop. And I want them to be, you know, part of, alam mo yung bawat pamilya may nagtagagdag ng pera sa loob? Oh my God. If you only knew how it feels. Si Tor lang may pera, hahatawin lagi yun. Ay, ikaw na pamili ng bigas. You know, a person's dignity, alam mo yung yabang mo sa buhay. That sense of value, Uh, that's why, marami salamat sa kanila in two weeks from now. Last night, I saw their trainings. Ano ko malulugod po kayo? Malulugod po kayo. I will show it to you. Na nagbunga itong mga senior citizen namin na magtatrabaho ulit. And even PWDs. 
Kasi yung mga, o oh kayo, marami dito, ekonomista, diba? ang individual, walang kinikita. Dating kumikita, walang kinikita. Problema ba yan ng bansa? Naman. Tutustusan nyo. Eh bigla nagkakita siya ulit. Nagkaroon siya ng konting hanap po. Oh my God, ang daming makakabili ng itlo, ng bigas, ng galunggo. Porcha. I think VSP, uh, the governor will agree with me this uh, effects of a person's capacity to buy. Again, at yung epekto sa rural area because of the produce and other things. You know, you know better than me what I'm saying. Ito mga hindi kumikita dati. PWDs. Oh. Yung mga tumira ng katriban, baka gusto ninyo, baka kaya ulit sa inyo, baka namimiss nyo. Addressing nutrition. Encourage them to go to school. No? Not to work for a few peso, but to go to school because there's food. Katulad ko, batang nutriban na kulungan. You know? Yeah. Stimulant. Allowances for them. Pera ng gobyerno yung pinabalik sa tao. Eh, pa'y sino may sabi niyan? Eh, huwag na kayo lumayo. Ang ginawa ko lang, kinopya ko lang yan. O, bakit? Eh, DSWD, ginagawa na yan. Who studied it? Not me. Why did they uh, adapt it? Because I think economists have this, their reasons na maganda yan. Ang tao, magkaroon ng konting uh, pananalapi para umikot ang pera. That's why, ayan, then, negotiate. Kami po, number one, number one pinakamahal ang amilyar sa buong Metro Manila. And it, I think it's, it's not wrong, but it's unfair. Why? Eh kasi naman, wala naman kayo nakikita ang development, taas-taas ng buwis, taas. Eh pero yung may kinukwento ko sa inyo sa kanto ng Soler, recto, pero yung may ano, ilang buwan pa lang kami, tatlong buwan. Ano yun, naisip na lang nila bigla isang araw dahil maganda na, sige, gawin na natin yung building. Or matagal na lang na plano yun, pero hindi nila matuloy dahil walang opportunity and walang chance. Now there's a chance. So I did start. We're building there. So, sabi ko, as my commitment, which is, ito kasi commitment ko to, ng no, no, kampanya. We will lower our real property tax at 40%, 20% first year, 10% second year, third, person, third year, 10%. That's going to be 40%. And maraming salamat ulit kay Vice Mayor Manila po na napasa na siya sa lungsod ng Maynila. Hindi uh, na ba ako buwis? Eh, paano yung mga ayaw magbayad ng araw? Dahil sa, one, maybe, nagmamakol sa gobyerno. Two, walang trust. Three, nagipit. Talagang nagipit lang. Hindi na kinaya. NPA eh. Nag-performing asset eh. Di ba? So, paano ko sila matutulungan? General Amnesty Program. Hindi lang sa milyar, pati sa negosyo. Malinis na ang libro ninyo. Nag-uusap na ang libro ninyo sa City Government, sa Security and Exchange Commission, at BIA. Iisa na lang ang gamit yung libro. <laughs> Because I wanted to start right. Sabi nga raw, mag-umpisa ka ng tama, matatapos ka ng tama. That's why I want a clear vision of 2020. Literal and metaphorically, that by 2020, everybody will start with zero. Clean slate. From there, we will gather datas. Unadulterated datas. Because we clear everybody. We gave them opportunity. And this is the longest, the longest amnesty in the city of Manila. Six months. Umabol kayo hanggang December 31 pa yan. Saya. And you know what the effect of this? Akala ko kasi nung una, I was advised. I was advised. 
Sorry, are you bored? No. You want me to continue? Yes. I was advised, Mayor, wag mo nang idama yung negosyo. I was advised, in fairness to them, you know, I have good people. They have, they, uh, nowadays, I, I, I hire, uh, I, I hire them, private person in their private uh, corporation. Na talagang hinila ko talaga sila as much as possible. Then, sabi, kasi yung mga negosyante, nagbabayad naman talaga yan. Tama naman. Uh, so, but the thing is, iniisip ko kasi yung concept, the sauce for the candor is the sauce for the goose. Para pantay-pantay na. Wala na akong, wala na akong diskresyon. Kasi yung diskresyon, pag naibigay sa politikong katulad ko, doon ang mangyayari yung tukso. Matutukso ko, baka kalang ko kayo mga, Okay, masyad yung pakapaniwala sa akin, ha? I'm still human being. I might be exposed later on into this, uh, or maybe not, but no. Sabi ko, hindi. Para wala akong decision making to choose on a certain policy. O, kailangan, ano, level. O, yun. You know what happened? This is the result of this. We've extended about 77 million. 14,000 real property and business establishment in the city of Malaya, no matter of September 1 to October 17. 14,000 individuals and corporations benefited for a simple act, and it's growing. 77 million of savings. Ito maganda. You know, Mayor, huwag ka nag Ang tawag dyan, amnistia, amnistia. Kayaan mo yan mga yan. Mayayaman yan. Which makes sense. Initial. <coughs> and I said, no. How can I achieve my goal of zero clearing up things? You know, uh, waiting for the dust you know, to settle. Settle, then you see the picture. If I'm going to do what they have done. So I did not follow again. No? So we continue. Then, alam niyo, mga kababayan, ito ah, walang exaggeration. He, and he's here. Manila, on a year on year, will only achieve 85% of its goal. Year on year. You know, as of, as of this moment, as we speak, alam ilang percent na kami? 104 percent. Ayun po may kasalanan si Atty. Paul Bea. Ayan. Ang license is easy. Kasalanan na napabuti ang Maynila. So what, what do we mean by that? Anong epekto nun? 104 and we still have two months to go. So, tama pala! Oh, kasi pag titignan nyo, kayo sa, kayo sa mga negosyante, pag tinignan nyo yun, tinitignan nyo lang yun, if it's patient, thank you very much, sabay tap sa likod ng bata mo. Kaling ko, bata, award ka ngayon. Bigyan ka na award next year. Kami, paano yung tinitignan nyo? 104, a normal mayor, a normal mayor, would wish to exceed Eh, alam niyo bakit? Pwede magkakaroon ng supplemental budget. Kasi you went outside of the target. You achieved outside of the So a normal mayor of politicians like me, nakutuwan-tuwa yun. Ang dami kong diskresyon. Which is wrong. Why? Kasi mali ang data mo last year. Mali ang pakikitungo mo sa empleyado mo. Hindi mo sila minaximize na ma-achieve. Dapat nilakay mo. If for five years, 14.8 billion, 14.8 billion, 14.8 billion, 14.8 billion. Ano? Pari-pariho kami kumikita, 14.8 billion lang every year. So we are not doing anything. We are just being a passive. Uh, lead of, uh, it's being parang passive leadership. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> You 
know how much are we going to propose income for next year? Kaya sumabay na kayo. 17.8 billion. Why? You know how much growth we have on average? We have a growth in an agency, an enterprise, no? yung medyo maganda, kumikitang uh, ahensya. Ang growth namin, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 15.4 average growth in matter of three months, apple to apple comparison, July 1 of, to October of their time, then July 1 of, to October of our time, yung growth, and I tell you numbers, sila parking alone, they're sending, or uh, I mean, uh, isinoso, ibinibigay, sa lungso, buwan buwan, July 2018. 2 million, 3 million, 4 million. You know how much we're earning? 9 million, 11 million, 17 million. Tano, lumaki ba ang may nila? <laughs> And the irony, the irony of this situation, Nagpaklas pa kami ng parkable space. We prohibited areas to be parked. Sige ba? Lumaki. Dahil siguro sa mga kasamahan ko na yan sa bundigan ito. Yung aming mga nakikita yung lalamis na nagpokolekta ng nagpokolekta. Siguro nagiging tapat na sila or dati na sila talaga tapat. Yung boss lang nila ang may problema. I don't know. Kasi you have to find. Kasi ano yung problema daw? You have to look. But that's one of the problems. You can apply it. So, awal na Diyos. So, yan po. Gumin awal, gumaan, magpapayan ng twist. Ito pa yan. And we're proud, you know, all those 1,600 municipalities, Secretary of Trade would want to see that Manila before 11 steps, 8 windows in filing new business would wait for 5 to 10 days. Now Manila, as like what the President said, sabi ni Pangulong Duterte, dapat yan, simple transaction, release lang, tapos na. Oh, Manila, three steps, one window, one day. That was a poll. See? Kaya na ba pala? Ano yung magdala ng nakikita namin? Ako to ako na ito, July 1, October of the time, and Ano yung mga nakikita namin? 400 million. Pero ang pili ko, hindi dahil sa magaling kami, hindi dahil sa efficient kami. Pili ko lahat, dahil matalama ko rin naman yung talaga magaling si Paul, o magaling yung mga kasamahan niya. Ano yung pili ko? Siguro dati na namin talaga na ako po kayo, natin kung talaga talaga sa iba. <laughs> Or it may be in a positive way because that is politically driven statement. Very clear, maybe not. Then maybe the other way, that other side of the community was less confident than um, 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 the Tao or the Migos. Then June.
Before we cross the street, there is a park. And there is 160 structures. from the office of the local district said, nobody but then it was a part. You 
Jerman jangan Chinese. Gini bang putih dari ikutnya. Tapi kan ini kita tak. Yo halaman kami kuliah nak berdesi open dress and disco. Dilinis nama, flashing nama, flashing dengan high pressure. And look at it now. We put lightings to give and remind all those Filipino Chinese that if you are Pag mabuti ka sa kapwa mo, you'll be immortalized. Look. Yan, tinibag ko yung, ang ganjan yung ano yan, ang puti ka. Yes! And you know, I don't have any single drop of Chinese blood. No, I don't have. I'm a pure-blooded Antequeño, Bisaya 100% ako. My father is from Antique, my mother is from Sama. These are the same people who went to Manila na nagpakasakali na, ma, na masuka ng nanay ko kasambahay ng isang pamilyang abogado nakita ng tatay ko, nakalawit then ako ang bunga That's their life story Of course But, you know ah, Maliwanag, maliwanas Then, next Look Oh, yung mga nagpupunta sa San Pamensa Tapos kung may biglang kaliwa, <laughs> hindi na tayo makakapunta ron, basa-basa. Kaya kayo na pumunta ron dahil madilim. Walang makakakita ng kotse niya. <laughs> hindi na po. Maliwanin ko siya. Well defined. 
with Filipino aesthetic. These are superficial aesthetics. This is now where the former governor of Tango used to do office. Sana inabot ni Kultur Ganong Araw at katarong bumba sa kutsi si Kultito Malamay. And that's Plaza Rueda, one of our historic plaza. Simple lang, open space. Look! People are enjoying to walk. Hindi 
Ayres Grove. Everybody, ambulance of Sato, the Madiba in ambulance. And so everything in less than a few weeks. Can you imagine? Have you heard any OFW, immigrants, Filipinos, everywhere in the world, in our country, in our, their respective provinces? Have you heard people donating their hard-earned money to the local government units? You should visit the people. People are giving 8,880 pesos and OFW, PWD from Queso. Senior citizen. $100 here, $100 there, $500 here, $500 there, $10,000 here from an immigrant in California who's watching our Facebook Live. You know, Everywhere in the world, OFW, Pera, Dulyaris. It's not about how much, it's about the actuation. And can you imagine a seven year old who loves to watch me, a boy from Kaloka, donated this? Because I really wanted to duplicate what Lee Kuan Yew did in Singapore. That's how you address informal settlements. No. So, okay. Next. Ayan na. Group. Tingnan nyo yung graph. The thing speaks for itself. Next. Malas talaga ako raise na. Sweating blue. Orange, nakukulungin. Sa kulungan niya. Okay, then, ito na kami. Manila siya. Okay, siya kayo. Bawa ko kali. Yun ang kanyang kali ko. Ito yun. Hindi ka siya kanya. Kaya tinatago na lang siya. And it's going to be built soon. Manila Soup. Done by a 22-year-old boy. Thesis. Ng isang architectural student that he adopted. He's not even an architect. But he passed that thesis. He was given the degree to his professor. So I'm going to assume it's safe. <laughs> but don't worry, our engineer that came up with DED, the detailed engineering. So, yes, I will make it more. Then, I took over to that one. Then, I took over to that That's the whole building. And this is the new 10 story full air conditioned building. Please, kahit man lang yung mahirap, sa huling hininga niya, nakita niya maganda view. <laughs> he will have the best view in town. Manila Bay. O, parang mo siya sinusog doon, may ulap yun. <laughs> if that's where he's going, I don't know the other way around. <laughs> so, more greens in our buildings. Open space. This is the atrium for the patient to go out. Wala nang sinabi sa akin ng mga katinit. Love to be hospitalized in the hospital ng Maynila. Don't go out into see it. Ang nangyong tatong ito. Mr. Pangilin mo. Next. Uy. Okay na. Next. Nice. Plaza Ferguson, Plaza Morga, Plaza San Lorenzo Luis will bring back the old Binondo the way it was designed before. Next. There you go. Raha Suliman, the major circle. Salamang ba? Sa kanto ng... Para magka-idea kayo ha? Kalaw, tapabi nyo. Ayan yun. Yun yun, yun yun ang salamang ka. Ayan. Pandapan. 
This is Pandasan now. Maraming salamat kay Mr. Ramon ha. Napaniwalaan niya na ako. He will develop his property. Petron uh, property. Yan yung property nila. No? It will be, maraming salamat sa tagi. Sinarado nila yung ganilang food terminal. <laughs> now, we are happy to receive your goods in Manila. Because this is going to be the food terminal of the country. Or metropolis of the place. Next. Ito na siya. Center, the old design of Burnham. The old NHOA and that is then NHOA, then the new city building and tower. I'll be invite you, everyone, to pass by in the near future. <coughs>
kalabatan ninyo ang NCCA. So, yan po yung uh, part na yan, no? May hand. Then, next, a Rosero's part. Yan siya mo yan. Then, ano siya? Bukas. Ganyan na siya. It will make it more family friendly. And we're growing some portion of streets of Manila to make it adjacent to Rosero Square. More more green space. Ita yung dulo. Ayan. Alin po may nyan? Rosero Square yan. Yan ang nagpo-post sa traffic sa Quezon Bridge. Kasi may lumalabas sa kachi ng kotse dyan. Pupunta ron. O yun. Magpuntang kalimit. Yun. Traffic. O sasarado ko yun. We'll make it more green space and I'll create an alley for Metropolitan Theater. Wala silang parking, full building. Bibigyan mo sila ng parking sa likod. Courtesy of City of Manila. Ayan na po. Oh, wala nang tatawid. Wala nang pedestrian. Wala nang silang tatawidan. So, hindi ka nakakabahan. Ayan ang Metropolitan Theater. So, ito po ang mangyayari sa buong City Hall, from Blackpool to Quezon Bridge. This is the Blackpool Camina. Ayan yung, ito yung Manila Pulog Shade. Now it's a park. This is uh, Mehan Garden. This is Arosero's Park. And we created more open green space na maglatakad na lang ang tao going to that is also a part. This area that is uh, Bonifacio, the was of Bonifacio. This is Metropolitan Theater. And more open green space here, all the way in the middle, to fight air pollution in London. Next. Ayan po siya. Nakita niyo dito na. Wala na makakatawin. Promise. It's going to be Rizal Abi. It's going to be a highway. A highway is undisturbed road. All the way to Spanya. That was a more vertical, vertical garden. Marami yan. Pakarami yan. Next. Uh, oh. Jones Bridge. That is today. Mga October 30, po sa nato. We're gonna bring, as you can see, yan ang mga yari. Pont Alexander.
Because I know it's feasible. You know what I mean. Financially. China Bank Restoration, maraming salamat. I just talked to Emil Young the other day. Iilawan na rin niya yung Bill Trust Building. Ito yung China Bank ngayon. Gagawin nila. Ginagawa na nila. Maraming salamat sa China Bank. Ito po siya ngayon. <laughs> Ito. Ah, nga pala. Kasama ko sa design nito ah. This is what we're going to do with an open space. And I think when I saw it, when I shown this to Secretary Simato, he's excited. More parking space for perpendicular cantilever undisturbed service code. Not parallel parking. Perpendicular parking by a cantilever. Na cantilever kami. Ito si Abis Rogue. Hindi po ito rocket science. I think uh, architect Palabuks uh, will agree with me. Simple lang yan.
Thank you. Magpapapicture lang kami. Sabi ng misis ko, magpapicture lang kami.